Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plan Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the European Nightcrawler progress from the Cocoon Only bin to the Adults bin. And uh, let me get you set up on the tripod, and we'll have a look and see what the progress is of baiting out the adults out of here and moving them into here. And then we'll take a look and see what's going on in here. All right, one second. Okay, here we are inside the European Night Curler, formerly known as Cocoon Only Bin. Now, if you remember, if you watched previous videos, and I can link up there as to what we did last time, but what we did was we harvested the castings uh, water method, which is not really something you usually see people do. Uh, but sometimes when they get super, super wet, uh, the only thing left to do is put them in a bucket of water, swirl them around, and rinse away the finished castings, leaving what is left. Uh, so that's what I did. And then I took the leftovers and put them with some new cardboard uh, that was just plain cardboard, not prepared bedding, and then put them back in their container here. Now, since that time, I have moved the European Nightcrawlers and the Red Wiggler, uh, all of the bins downstairs to make room for my vermi bag, um, little, man little Mammoth. And so now these guys are going to be down here and it's going to be a little cooler and I don't really think they're going to mind. According to what I understand, um, the European Nightcrawlers and the Red Wigglers do just fine at 65 degrees. So I don't anticipate them having a problem here in the basement. Um, the rest of the bins, like the, well, what I have left of my bins, uh, I never had a problem. So I don't know if there's going to be any food left in here aside from bedding. So I'm going to take a look around and see if I see any concentrations of worms any place. Uh, let's see. Not yet. There's a chubby one. Okay, so I'm not seeing any food at that end. Now that they're in their permanent home, I'll be able to make sure I know where the food is. No, looks like just bedding. All right, well, that's totally fine. I have lots of food for them. So much so, in fact, my husband is like, uh, you need to get going with this whole video thing because the leftovers and the, the worm food is overtaking the uh, available freezer space. So, that is what we are doing today. We are trying to catch up on the worm videos um, and by default getting rid of a lot of a lot of food. So what I have today for these guys is something that hasn't been frozen yet. Also a little bit on the forbidden food side. What we have is onions and celery Cotto pit, not too controversial. More onions, avocados, tea bags, banana peel, another banana peel. And since I don't actually know when the last time they've had a proper feeding, uh, I wanted to make sure that since I couldn't find anything at all, that they definitely had enough to go through. So we're going to cover these guys up, uh, cover that food up, and then we can move on to the next European Nightcrawler bin, which is the Grow Up bin. All right, here we are in the Grow Up bin. You can see quite a bit of castings along the edges, and quite a few cocoons on the top here. Little one there. Pretty good size one there. 
So they must be happy in their grow up bin. Seeing some avocado pits and avocado shells. Let's see if we've got any. Okay, last time I fed, I fed leftover bread, which I took and put in with some water, which you can tell it stays much, it doesn't turn into a brick if you do that. You do get kind of a decent worm ball. But I'm going to put that back, kind of mix that in with some more bedding. After a week's time you would expect this to be a little farther along, so I'm going to mix it in with the bedding in case it's, um, it smells kind of yeasty, doughy, but there's no heat. So I'm going to mix it in just in case it needs a little bit more microbial action to progress it forward. There's quite a bit of worms in here, so I'm not concerned that they there's not enough worms to deal with that food. It's just that uh, bread is kind of weird in, in that they don't really go after it real quickly, or they don't finish it really quickly. So I'm going to let them slowly hash away at that. Now, I actually think the red wigglers would probably have done better with that, and I think they also got some bread. So we'll see in a minute here how they're doing. But I'm going to give them some fresh food, and uh, that way when they get done with the bread, then they'll have someplace else to go. And they're going to get more of the same, which is avocados, onions, and bananas, tea bags. Baby orange, lime. I'm not going to overload them. Probably going to feed them a little bit lighter than I normally would simply because they've already got that bread they can work on. Cover that up. So we got to see a little bit of a worm ball. There's a good concentration of worms in here. But as the as I keep taking them out of the original bin and putting them in here, uh, I'm just hoping to expand my population of the European night crawlers. I'm not sure if it's entirely true, but when you have the European night crawlers in with the red wigglers and the blue worms, you tend to um, see the population of European night crawlers. I don't know if they get smaller or if they just get outcompeted. I'm not sure, but they are a good fishing worm. You know, and I mean they compost well, um, but I would like to have a bigger population of them, because God knows it would be a hard you'd be hard pressed to thread a blue worm onto a hook. All right, I'm gonna go take care of my hands here, and I'll bring you back for the red wigglers. All right, here we are at the red red wiggler cocoon only bin, which of course cocoon only is that ship has sailed quite a long time ago. So let's take a look and see how they're doing with their clean bedding. Let's see if I can find any food left over here. You can see a lot of castings along the sides. You can see how light it is when it's paper bedding versus if this was uh, leaf bedding, this would be almost black. In case anybody's counting, still have some uh, corn from the summer. seeing that there's any food left from before the harvest. 
so we can dig them a nice spot and feed them up. some celery and onions, oranges, banana, tea, I think that's also a moldy orange, some potatoes, All right, that should do them for this week, that'll give them quite a bit to do. I'll break this open for them. A little more surface area. Okie doke, and then we will cover them up and move on to the grow up bin for the red wigglers. Here we go. Looks like <clears throat> This is where the bread feeding was, and there's a lot less of it left than there was of the European night crawlers. There's just, I mean, they got the same amount of bread, and this is all that's left in the <clears throat> the red wigglers. They do appreciate their nitrogen food more than night crawlers do. Or so it has appeared in my experience. But that was that was a good size worm ball in there. And like before, I am gonna make sure that I disperse it. And this is very wet. I'm gonna leave the lids off of these guys. I'm discovering that uh, Having the worms in where I keep my plants and orchids with the humidifier going uh, creates summer-like conditions. Oh, it looks we have still some pumpkin left over. Hmm. Oh, and uh, springtails. I'm not sure if you can see them, but they're all hopping around like little miniature white frogs. And that's a normal part of a worm bin. It is, they all work together like a multi-department team. Um, the worms take care of things at a certain point. The mites and springtails um, take care of things at a different point. And they all work together to get things composted and make me some nice castings. So really, I mean, the last time that I had anything that was really bad was I think the European Nightcrawler grow up bin from about maybe six months ago where the springtails were just insane. Um, but here, I mean, I can go like this and I don't see them anymore, whereas that bin was just lousy with them. I ended up harvesting the castings to get them through a really fine screen to get rid of them. Um, I know they all have their part to play, but sometimes, you know, too much is too much. Um, if I have to work in the worm bin, I can't have them crawling all over me. Yuck. All right, well, I don't think this bin needs fed. I am, even though I like to keep everything equal between the European night crawlers and the red wigglers, I know when to say when. And they had pumpkin left over as well as the bread, so I think they can go another week. We're not going to have a nice worm ball next week when we looked in on them, but we'll get some in the little bin. It's, it's more important to take care of them well and make sure that you're not overloading the system and creating problems. And if I'm already seeing an uptick in what I consider to be a pest to me species, then honestly, it's, it's probably getting too much. So I'm going to leave them with no feeding this week. And I'm also going to leave their bins open so they can dry out a little bit. Um, of course, they are enjoying it, but it, I don't want it to go too far like it did last time where I can't dry it back out again. So it's best not to let it go too far. 
All right, guys. Well, that is the end of the European Nightcrawler Red Wiggler um, species only bin. If you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.